Hello there, beautiful humans. Melinda Joy, Crossroads Storyteller here. I'm a professional tarot reader. And before I got into tarot, I was a biblical studies scholar. And I am super excited to look at the biblical tarot today with you. So, full transparency, I received this deck for free in exchange for a review. And I'm probably going to do a lot more than a review. I'm very interested and excited about the presence of this deck in the world. I think about the Bible and tarot all, all of the time. And I have lots of intentions to create my own version of something that might look similar to this. But all of that to say, I am really excited to share with you why I'm interested in the Bible and tarot and what I think something like this in the marketplace represents. Okay, so... I'm going to just show you the cards and talk about why I think this deck is so cool. And then in future videos, I will do some more in-depth looking at the cards in a meaning-centric kind of way. And I'm really interested in the ways Bible informs tarot as well as the ways tarot informs Bible. So we'll look at a little of both of those in future videos. But if you are interested in something that talks more about the logistics of the cards and the deck, you can find those details at biblicaltarot.com where there's all sorts of explanations of the card stock and box and why they chose the choices they chose and there's also a pdf available that i'll probably discuss later and there's all sorts of really cool content on the website you can find the deck on amazon for roughly 30 dollars and i will include all of those links in the description box below if i mention anything else know that I am obsessive about including all resources in the description box below, so you'll probably be able to find it there. So let's get on with it. Why am I spending time and energy on this deck? Well, I, as many of us do, see a lot of fractions in today's culture and society. Uh, I think there's a lot of black and white thinking. There's a lot of us versus them thinking. And the more I mature in my perception and perspective, the more I see the world is full of variation and is ever evolving and is not really black and white at all. And I think it is more helpful and useful to look curiously at what is instead of judging according to what you think should be. As someone who has spent the first 25 years of my existence very dedicatedly and thoroughly living a Christian life and identity, and also, as someone who just spent the last decade living a very magical, focused, perhaps pagan life, I can attest that there is a lot more in common between the two ways of living than there are differences. And I think it's really the shoulds that are the rub. 
They think it's the things should be a certain way kind of thinking and the you got to do it my way to be good and right kind of thinking. And these these ways of thinking I think are present in all of the fractions. I don't think it's one group that's got the problem. But I think it's it's those ways of thinking and being the shoulds and the I'm right and you got to do it my way to be right kinds of thinking that are really causing the problem. And it's not the differences between the two groups that are causing the problems, in my opinion and perspective. Okay, so I'm sure there's someone at some point in time watching this video who's like Melinda Joy. But what about divination? Doesn't God forbid me from divining the future? I know this argument and my personal opinion is that divination, whatever you're using it for, is a conversation. Um, I think it's a conversation with God and one can totally have that conversation without discussing the future. And as far as what the Bible says, I think it might be worth checking out the Urim and the Thummim, stones used by the high priests in the tabernacle, black and white stones that were used to talk with God and clarify God's will. Um, so we've got some examples of acceptable, useful divination as conversation with God in the Bible. And if you read all of the super cool content that this creator has put out about this deck, you'll know that this deck was intentionally designed for self-discovery and self-growth. In the same way that many humans use the Bible as a bridge between humans and God to better understand God and God's will for their lives, so does this deck. It's just a visual Bible. And um, there's a PDF on the website, biblicaltarot.com, that explains uh, all sorts of suggestions for how to use the deck in ways that don't explore knowing the future and focus on getting to know God and God's will for your life and... Um, and getting to know the God spec within oneself because we are created in God's image according to the biblical text. So there's some aspect of God within us that I think is also useful and valuable to get to know and converse with. Okay, I'm sure there's someone else who is like Melinda Joy. What if I'm inviting the devil and demons into my life by picking up these cards? Yes, I understand the struggle, especially since there is a card labeled the devil. Know, though, that it's not the devil in your deck. It's a picture of the devil that means maybe you're not quite on the right track. So, quite helpful to know when you're not on the right track. But... When it comes to tarot, I think it is very much a tool. And in the same way people use the metaphor of a hammer as a tool, you could theoretically use a hammer very violently and inappropriately. And that would be an inappropriate tool in that scenario. But you could also use a hammer in a very constructive, supportive way and that would be a very good tool in that situation. I think tarot is the same way. I think tarot is a really good tool for contemplation, exploration, discovery of yourself as well as the divine. And I think there are also really good ways you can clarify your intention 
clarify that you are using your deck to converse with God. It's very common in lots of traditions to pray or say a blessing over your cards before you read with them. Yeah, I guess what I usually say is I invite the divine. I usually say all aspects of the divine that have my highest interests in mind. And I ask for clear sight and clear knowing and the motivation to act in my best interests and for the betterment of the whole. And you can make your own version of that prayer. And once again, there's suggestions in the PDF guidebook and on how to ritualize your experience with the cards and uh, incorporate them into your biblical study and divine explorations. So yeah, definitely does not need to be related to the devil in any way. <laughs> and um, lastly, I'm sure there's someone out there who is thinking, but Melinda Joy, aren't the Bible and the tarot completely different? Aren't they from different groups of people, different traditions? And to you, beautiful human, I would say I got some cool information for you. And that uh, actually, of the earliest tarot decks, there's at least one of them. The most popular one, uh, dubbed the Tarot de Marseille, was created by a clergyman, Marsilio Ficino. And if you want to explore more on that topic, definitely check out Christophe Ponce and the brilliant work he's been doing on that topic specifically. So, Ficino was definitely a clergyman. He was a man of the church. He was a theologian and a scholar and a hermeticist. And according to Ponce, he helped create the Tarot de Marseille, which is arguably one of the most influential tarot decks of all time. In addition to that, they found portions of early decks, specifically this Taroki, which is the early tarot, in a monastery. It was preserved as one of the oldest uh, versions of the tarot that we have because it was so perfectly preserved in a wall in a monastery because the monks were the ones using them as tools for teaching other humans about complicated concepts. And if you're interested in exploring more, you can check out Meditations on the Tarot, A Journey into Christian Hermeticism, where the Christian aspect of the tarot is very much highlighted. The creator or writer of this work was not credited, probably in an attempt to preserve his life under very strict rules regarding what one could and could not believe in Renaissance time period. So yeah, there's very clearly a relationship between tarot and the Christian communities that have also been strongly influenced by the Bible. And there's a lot of tarot symbolism, just normal tarot, not biblical tarot, that has very clearly and obviously been inspired by Christian iconography and symbolism. Already super connected. So if you are a tarot nerd who has friends and family steeped in biblical narratives like I am, or if you are a loving Christian family or friend uh, to a tarot enthusiast, this might be a good deck or a good tool for you to connect deeper with the humans and the God you love. And, you know, maybe it's not, and that's super okay too. I'm not here to tell you that you need this deck, um, but I am here to tell you that this kind of deck is uh, really powerful to the collective at this point. And I'm really excited that I get a chance to share it with the world. And if you enjoyed this at all, 
be sure to like and subscribe. Feel free to comment any of your opinions on the deck below. Let me know what you think of my opinions. And if you have any other burning questions that I didn't respond to, yes, make sure to like and subscribe also so that you can be notified when additional biblical tarot content comes out. So much love.